Hey, I'm Kendra Winchester. Welcome back to my channel. And I'm going to be doing the My Pleasure tag for you today. I was tagged by Robert of Roberta Hordes, and he's new to BookTube. So if you haven't uh, watched his videos yet, you definitely need to have head over there and check out his channel. Um, I really enjoy watching his videos. I'm so glad that he moved from a commenter to an actual video creator because it's really cool to see that. So anyway, uh, this tag was started by Steve Partridge and it, it has some prompts. So they're one word prompts with like a little explanation on there. So let's get started. So the first prompt is think a book that made you think hard. And I had to choose, I think, Ally Smith's The Accidental um, because this book, as you can probably tell, um, really just had my brain just on fire and I made like this entire outline of the book and made all these notes and I was actually buddying this uh with Russell and he's just a good soul and just like <laughs> just accept it here's the document just read it it's very gracious um but when I get on a book like this like I can't not research it it just you know it just lights my brain on fire and I have to outline and just do all of these different things and have all of this so um this really made me think and I really love Ellie Smith and the way that she does and I definitely think that this could very possibly be uh, some has some allusions to Virginia Woolf's To the Lighthouse and you know Virginia Woolf's my favorite writer so um, I just really enjoyed this one and yeah Ellie Smith always makes me think she's just so smart how did she get so smart I I would love to be as smart as Ellie Smith oh my goodness but wouldn't we all Next one is love a book that broke your heart or mended it um, and I have to talk to you about love that dog um, by Sharon Creech uh, I was taking a writing for children class because I needed the credit and uh, I was a non uh, fiction emphasis person so I was like why am I here and then I realized I could write nonfiction and anyway so I ended up somehow sitting in this circle um, with a bunch of elementary ed majors and uh, sweet, adorable women who wanted to write children's books. <laughs> and I've been there and like my converse and anyway. So we're sitting in this circle and we're reading this book. Guys, I love this. This is about a boy and he's in this English class and he's writing poetry as part of the English class and you know something happened and by the end like we were all crying and I felt like the biggest was ever but it really is an adorable, adorable book. And later in life, several years later, I got a copy of Hate That Cat, and it's also adorable. He has this cat, and he hates it, and love ensues. Uh, this is a signed copy, actually, and I got it signed for Dylan. She was very gracious. Very gracious person. Thank you, Sharon Creed. <laughs> the second prompt is Eat, um, a, a book that nourishes you. I'm next to gonna go a little more literal and choose Cooked by Michael Pollan. I love Michael Pollan. Um, I have a lot of food allergies, so I have to eat almost like basically Whole30, just not quite as strict on some of the grains, like rice, for example. Um, so I love his approach because it's about eating nutrition um, and where your food comes from matters. Um, and not all food uh, is created equal. It just, I, I just really love his thought processes and how uh, balanced he is. But I really loved Cooked because it's a celebration of cooking innovation. He starts with uh, fire and then moves to water and then earth or air and earth, earth and air, whatever, it doesn't really matter. But he moves through innovations of how food is cooked. Uh, obviously it starts with fire and just the way that he looks at that and just his journalistic style is amazing. And I listened to the audiobook and he really loves food. And I just love his love of food. I love watching documentaries about food and they actually turn Cooked into a Netflix documentary. So if you haven't watched that, you definitely need to go check it out because it's just, it's just really well done. And I love learning about food and where food comes from and principles behind why you cook the way you cook rather than just following a recipe. Uh, I have to cook most of my food from scratch. So I just love him. Ugh, let's quit gushing. Next prompt is Laugh, and that is a book that brought you comic relief, and I have to, have to choose We Were Never Meeting in Real Life by Samantha Irby. And I know this book is not for everyone. My friend Autumn really does not like this book. She just did not mesh with Irby's humor. And that's because Irby's humor is so descriptive. Everything from her love life with her wife to this accident she had on the side of the road because she has Crohn's. I don't need to tell you anything else. Um, but everything is just hilarious. But there is a serious undercurrent to all that she is talking about. And she's so, she, she just doesn't let up. She had a very difficult childhood and she has Crohn's and, and arthritis and a lot of different things. And you as a reader are just overwhelmed by 
her life and all of the things that she's had to deal with. But that's the way that she lives her life. Like she can never just close the book and walk away. And that's that's really what I love about Samantha Irby and uh, her writing. It's just really intense and it's just the way she writes about chronic illness uh, as someone who has chronic illness is just so true to life. And uh, she talks sometimes about like talking to people about her chronic illness and I don't know. But she's so funny. I laughed out loud so much. And if you have the chance to listen to the audiobook, I would choose that one because uh, I think in print you could read it the wrong way or you, you can't hear her inflections and she's just so funny. So funny. The first essay is about The Bachelor, which she loves, but she also makes fun of. And I've seen people get kind of offensive, get like get a little offended that she's picking on The Bachelor, like, but she, she loves it as well. So I think you can make fun of things you love, obviously. Uh, the next prompt is Sex, a book that explores or contains sexuality that doesn't make you cringe. Now, this is a big one because most, most like, it, it's really hard to write a non-cringy sex scene because I don't know what it is. It just sounds funny or it just doesn't work. I just, I think it's just one of the epitomes of writing talent if you can actually write a good sex scene. He probably, he's over there, he probably shouldn't be listening to this. Anyway, so uh, I had to read you the section of uh, Salvage the Bones by Jess Moore because it's the first time that I actually read a sex scene and knew it was, had so many layers of meaning and you'll understand. So this is about, um, Esh, and she, her mom died, and so she doesn't have a, a mom kind of like to talk to her about different things, and so she discovered sex when she was 12, um, because guys just started using her for that, and so just know that's her past sexual history. She's now about 15 or 16. So here is part of the scene where she's with Manny, um, and this is, he had never kissed me except like this, with his body, never his mouth. My underwear slid down my legs. He was peeling away my clothes like an orange rind. He wanted the other me, the pulpy, ripe heart. The sticky heart the boy saw through my boyish frame, my dark skin, my plain face. The girly heart that before Manny, I let boys have because they, they wanted it, not because I wanted to give it. I let boys have it because for a moment, I was Psyche or Eurydice or Daphne. I was beloved, but with Manny, it was different. He was so beautiful and he still chose me again and again, and again. He wanted my girl heart. I gave him both of them. Isn't that just the most beautiful thing you've ever heard? I just, and before that, obviously there's some more description before that, uh, but she just did a beautiful job of explaining that sex to Ash is just so much more than the physical act with Manny. And I, it's the first time that I ever admired um, a sex scene in a book because it's just so rare that you don't have a cringy sex scene. So definitely a good prompt because, yeah. But definitely check out Salvage the Bones if you haven't already. I think I say that like every video. Virginia Woolf, Desmond Ward, Virginia Woolf, Desmond Ward, just go read them, right? And you'll understand. Next two prompts go together for me. And the first one is Rest, a book that gives you peace, reflection, or calms you down. Um, so I have to pick Mrs. Dalloway by Virginia Woolf. No one is surprised. No one is surprised and there's a reason. Whenever I get stressed, I pull out this book and I read this first line. It says, Mrs. Dalloway said she would buy the flowers herself. And it, there's just something about entering the scene with Mrs. Dalloway walking down the street of London and doing these things and the, the style of Virginia Woolf's prose. Um, because I spent so much time studying her and working um, with her works and her life and just reading about Virginia Woolf, returning to this is like returning to an old friend. It's a book that I have read and reread so many times in bits and pieces, not necessarily just straight through. Um, because there are sections of it that are just so beautiful and I don't need anything else. I just need this. I just need this section. One of the reasons why she's my favorite writer, this is my favorite novel of hers, though it's not her best novel, it is my favorite novel um, because I just think it's fantastic and it just means so much to me as as a person. It taught me so many things and so when I re you know return to it, it's like coming home. It's like Harry Potter, basically. The last prompt is experience, a book that introduces you to a new subject and added to your experience. So I, I have to pick A Room on Its Own because it's the first work on feminism that I read that truly connected with me. And uh, I was just a different person before I read this book. And when I read this, I realized all the feelings that I've been having, there was a name for it, there was a way that it looked like. I was not obviously the first person that had these feelings. And this was written over a hundred, like, almost a hundred years ago, almost. Um, and, and Virginia Woolf communicated to me as a student 
the idea that women should also be educated and why that's important and why women should have independence. And uh, I was a very serious college student and I didn't I didn't have time for men, but men were always like trying to impress me when they learned to like books and they would mansplain things to me and I was just so fed up. And I feel like all of those feelings are just encapsulated in this book because Virginia Woolf is like, we need, we need our own space, guys. Um, and so this just was really like the gateway for me, which is why as someone interested in reading more about feminism and they've never really approached the topic before, I always recommend this because I feel like it's accessible to wherever you are because you can agree. You can agree that women deserve education. And women uh, are equal, you know, equal human beings when you see it like this on the page. And um, it's just a first step. It's, it's meeting someone where they're at. And uh, this is what I needed at the time. So it is definitely like Feminism 101, but definitely useful, still relevant to this day. So um, I could keep talking about this, but I will spare you because I talk about this book like every couple months. I will keep doing so. And this is my beloved copy. I have I have other copies, but this is the one that I write in. It's my favorite. I have several editions of all of them because you might have noticed I have another copy of Salvage the Bones right behind my head. <laughs> anyway, so that was the uh, My Pleasure tag. Those are some of my favorite books um, that I have read in recent years. And so you should definitely go check those out. Um, thank you so much, Robert, for tagging me. Um, I'm going to tag Doris at Aldi Books, Claire at Claire Reads Books, and Leah at Hide and Seek. Uh, I would love to see you guys do the tag. It's just a fun tag to talk about some of your favorite books and learn more about the person doing the tag. So uh, also, if you just want to do this tag, also please go do the tag because it's a lot of fun. Anyway, uh, that's all for me, and I guess I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.